Good morning. Today's Monday, the 8th of May, and it's Monday in the fifth week of Easter, Eastertide. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help, so that, defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. We make, we make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. And the first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Eventually, with the connivance of the authorities, a move was made by pagans as well as Jews to make attacks on the apostles and to stone them. When the apostles came to hear of this, they went off for safety to Lecania, where in the town of Lystra and uh, where in the towns of Lystra and Derby and the surrounding country, they preached the good news. A man sat there who never walked in his life because his feet were crippled from birth. And as he listened to Paul preaching, he managed to catch his eye. Seeing that the man had the faith to be cured, Paul said in a loud voice, Get to your feet, stand up. And the cripple jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the language of Lacania, These people are gods who have come down to us disguised as men. They addressed Barnabas as Zeus, and since Paul was the principal speaker, they called him Hermes. The priests of Zeus outside the gate, proposing that all the people should offer sacrifice with them, brought garlanded oxen to the gate. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard what was happening, they tore their clothes and rushed into the crowd shouting, Friends, what do you think you're doing? We are only human beings like you. We have come with good news to make you turn from these empty idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that these hold. In the past he allowed each nation to go its own way, but even then he did not leave you without evidence of himself in the good things he does for you. He sends you rain from heaven, he makes your crops grow when they should, he gives you food and makes you happy. Even this speech, however, was scarcely enough to stop the crowd offering them sacrifice. The Word of the Lord. And the Gospel is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Jesus said to his disciples, Anybody who receives my commands and keeps them will be the one who loves me, and anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and show myself to him. Judas, this was not Judas Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what is all this about? Do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words, and my word is not my own. It is the word of the one who sent me, I have sent these things to you while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. The Gospel of the Lord. So the Gospel follows on from yesterday, and Jesus is reaffirming, especially in answer to Judas's question, Yes, if you see me, you see the Father. And if you, make, if you follow my commandments, you follow my way of life, if you live like somebody who's living the life that Jesus outlines in, for example, the Sermon on the Mount, then the Father will love you, will love us. So we're called in the Gospel reading to renew our determination to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to lead a life as close to him as we can. The first reading takes forward the preaching of the, gospel, of the gospel, the good news, as it spreads out from Jerusalem to Antioch and beyond. And when Paul, the apostles, especially Paul and Barnabas, hear that the people where they've been preaching are about to uh, throw them into prison, they decide to move on and they go to the towns of Lystra and Derby, further inwards into Turkey. 
And there, this man who's been crippled from birth because his feet were bent at birth, catches the eye of Paul. And Paul can see that this man has got faith. He trusts. He knows that God will heal him. So Paul says to him, Arise and walk. And the man does. He's been healed by the power of God. The people seeing this decide that Paul and Barnabas are, are divine beings. They're gods who have come to earth disguised as human beings. Um, that are part of the, the local Greek religion. Um, but Paul and Barnabas say to God, no, 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 you've got it wrong. We're just ordinary people. Um, and that, that other man who puts flowers around the oxen to, for further worship, that's all false religion. True religion is to follow the Lord Jesus. Then Paul goes on with that very interesting statement. Before Jesus came and before we preached to you, God let you do, do go, go about things your own way without being here being told the good news. But even then, you had hints of the good news because of the generosity of God, giving you life, giving you crops, giving you growth. And there's this very real sense that it's through natural law, through natural gifts, that many people can come to realize there is a God. There is somebody who gives us all that we need, need in this universe. Um, and that somehow we should reflect on our experience of life and see the finger of God in it. We turn to our bidding press. The response is, Lord, save us through your victory. The Father has glorified Jesus and handed over to him the whole of creation. Let us praise him in our morning prayer. Lord, save us through your victory. Lord Jesus, you have broken the power of hell, destroying sin and death. Do not let us be defeated in our struggle with temptation. Lord, save us through your victory. You have ended death forever and given us new life. Guide our steps today along the path that leads to God. Lord, save us through your victory. You rose from the dead to renew all people. Grant eternal life to everyone we meet. Lord, save us through your victory. The disciples rejoiced when you came back from the grave. Fill the hearts of your servants with overflowing joy. Lord, save us through your victory. And you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, by your grace, we are made one in mind and heart. Give us a love for what you command, and a longing for what you promise, so that amid this world's changes, our hearts may be set on the world of lasting joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, remain with you always. Amen. God bless. Have a good day. Bye. Let's change and run along.